but first, the local news. Join in. Will Evansville City and Vandenberg County governments merge? Weigh in. Presidential contenders prepare for debate round two. And now the treatment for leukemia just got a little easier. Live from 14 WFIE, the Tri-State's news leader, this is Newswatch 14 at 10. VandyGov failed big time 30 years ago. Now a new merger plan is taking shape. Good evening, I'm David James. I'm Ann Comas. A unification committee has been working for months now on a blueprint to merge Evansville City and Vandenberg County governments. Voters rejected the last attempt to combine government agencies, defeating Vandiga by a three to one margin. Is this new effort being embraced by the public? Kenan Oliphant reports on tonight's meeting at USI. I would suggest that you try to go to like one representative for 3,000. You would have possibly a mayor appointed from a district by the other district members. So Weighing in on unification, citizens raising their hands and asking okay. questions on the future of their local government. I think we definitely have to look towards evening, what everyone. we can you bring would, uh, about for the future, and that means um, looking at things in a new way. And it depends on how it's done. Um, there's, there is um, a lot of pitfalls that uh, are, are subject to happen. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's, it's kind of a fashionable thing, which is not, doesn't make it good. There's concern about losing quality of service by merging the two governments. You keep talking about competition. My experience is competition is good and usually gets you a better deal. Citizens were invited to four breakout groups dealing with government services, health and safety, economy and taxation, and government structure. This is a big step from the previous meeting in June where the committee only took general comments about the merger without the specifics. Kenan Oliphant, Newswatch 14, WFIE. The Indiana legislature would have to approve any local merger of governments and then a possible voter referendum. The local committee hopes to take its plan to the General Assembly in December. There was no referendum on the UNIGOV merger for Indianapolis and Marion County, and some lawmakers have called the referendum a killer amendment. There will be another unification meeting tomorrow night. This one will be at the University of Evansville starting at 7 o'clock in Hyde Hall. On Newswatch at 6, we ask if you're in favor of merging Evansville City and Vandenberg County governments. Well, here are the results of our online poll. 60% say yes, they are in favor of merging. 40% say no. You can uh, still vote by logging on to our website, 14WFIE.com. And now to our weather. Some excitement. We've got some <laughs> rain showing up in the tri-state. Much needed rain. Meteorologist Chad Seawitch in the Weather Center with a preview. Any more left, Chad? Uh, there is some more left. Boy, it doesn't take much to get some excitement going on around here. Just a few raindrops, but we are going to have more raindrops and bigger puddles, looks like, by tomorrow afternoon. Let's take a live look at Doppler 14. We've been tracking some light rain showers out to the west generally, and they're not real impressive, but they are moving off to the north, slightly off to the northeast and they will be continue that trend. There is some more rain behind that. Let's take a look at the regional radar and you can see the waves of light rain showers we've seen move through. A few moderate pockets from time to time, but uh, you can see the heaviest rain is down to the south and that is heading our way. So I do believe we will see some wet weather on the horizon and just how much will we get? All those details in a few minutes. Great. Thanks, Chad. Thanks a lot. There is a word tonight that the driver of that Illinois tour bus that crashed this weekend had been driving all night without any backup. The crash Saturday along Interstate 55 near Marion, Arkansas, killed driver Herbert Walters and 13 passengers en route to a Mississippi casino. Federal investigators are looking into what the 67-year-old driver did during the day to evaluate a possible fatigue factor in this crash. There were no signs of any skidding or braking when the bus ran off the road. Investigation into this accident could take up to three months. A Holocaust museum destroyed by arson last year is being rebuilt in Terre Haute, Indiana. And there was a groundbreaking for it today for the Candles Museum. Holocaust survivor Eva Kaur founded this museum more than eight years ago and has now raised several hundred thousand dollars to rebuild it. Police are still investigating the fire, calling it a possible hate crime because Remember, Timothy McVeigh was written on one of the walls. 
The congressional campaign of Kentucky's Nick Clooney is on hold. The Democrat has postponed two scheduled debates this week because of the sudden death of his son-in-law, who suffered a heart attack this morning. Clooney and Republican Jeff Davis are seeking the open 4th District seat. Nick Clooney is the father of actor George Clooney. Honoring tri-state heroes, several people, a city fire uh, officer, a sheriff's deputy, a firefighter, and three civilians were honored today at the Civic Center for saving the life of a veteran worker in a deadly house explosion in April. Two women died in the explosion. Each of the men received a bronze award and will also be recognized at tomorrow's Fire Merit Commission meeting. Kentucky lawmakers are closer to a compromise uh, on state, uh, the state's health insurance plan. House members have filed what's known as a shell bill showing intent to reduce out-of-pocket expenses for state employees. A final vote could come by the end of the week, but leaders are not yet ready to announce any details. This is so technical that I think it would really be a, a, be a uh, problem if we put something in the hopper and it had a lot of holes in it. We don't do something today, pass the bill by Friday, we could have serious repercussions happen as far as open enrollment being affected. Some Kentucky teachers have threatened to strike on October 27th if their current benefits are not restored. Coming up on Newswatch, a busy day on the campaign trail and the rhetoric heats up as we near the third and final presidential debate. And was it the, colla the collapse of two electronic towers, an act of sabotage? Stay with us. You're watching Newswatch 14 at 10 with David James, Ann Comas, Storm Team Meteorologist Jeff Lyons, and Sports with Rich Miller on 14 WFIE, the Tri-State's news leader. Tonight's News Watch at 10 is brought to you by St. Mary's Advanced Care Hospital. You deserve advanced care. Unfortunately, most people think that if they go into a hospital with heart problems, they will come out with something that looks like this. Not true. Major heart problems don't always mean major surgery. St. Mary's is leading the way with heart procedures that are less invasive with less recovery time. St. Mary's Advanced Care Hospital. You deserve advanced care. Sabotage is suspected in the collapse of two transmission towers outside Milwaukee. The FBI says bolts from both towers were deliberately removed. The towers fell Saturday across railroad tracks knocking out power to about 17,000 homes and businesses, including Milwaukee's Mitchell Airport. The Oak Creek police chief stopped short of calling it an act of terrorism, but the FBI did issue a general warning to watch out for attacks on infrastructure. The company that owns those towers is now offering a $10,000 reward to find out who's responsible. President Bush and Senator Kerry campaigning in the West where they'll debate in Arizona Wednesday night. The Bush campaign is claiming Kerry doesn't understand the war on terror. NBC's Tracy Potts has the story. How can Kerry protect us when he doesn't understand the threat? That's the president's new campaign ad responding to a Sunday interview where Senator John Kerry said he wants to reduce terrorism from a daily life-threatening concern to the level of a nuisance. Our goal is not to reduce terror to some acceptable level of nuisance. Our goal is to defeat terror by staying on the offensive. Both candidates campaigned in New Mexico where four years ago the vote was even closer than Florida. In an energy speech, Kerry links Bush to Big Texas oil. The money that you're paying at the pump is going directly from your wallet straight into the hands of the oil companies and the oil producers. As he spoke, Congress passed a $76 billion corporate tax cut, and Kerry's campaign hit the airwaves. I don't believe the wealthy need another tax cut. The people are speaking their minds. Back in Washington, top musicians ended their Vote for Change concert tour to benefit Democrats. The latest polls are close, headed into Wednesday's debate in Arizona, which will focus on domestic issues. Analysts think the death of actor Christopher Reeves could put federally funded stem cell research back on Wednesday's agenda. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. 
As Tracy said, the death of actor Christopher Reeve uh, does promise to refuel the political debate over embryonic st stem cell research. Reeve was a strong advocate for stem cell research and a carry friend. President Bush favors existing stem cell research, but is not ready to approve federal funding for the, quote, destruction of human embryos. Christopher Reeve was in Chicago just last Tuesday visiting patients at a rehabilitation center, looking healthy, no signs of failing health, but he died yesterday of heart failure. Reeve was a tireless advocate for patients with spinal cord injuries, and it was his determination that helped a local woman deal with her recovery after a traffic accident. He just, he never stopped. And he, even with his injury being up so high and so serious, uh, he went from not being able to, to breathe on his own to finally doing that, wiggling a finger, and that's just huge when you've been through something like that. Reeves' death was sudden, fighting an infection from a pressure wound. A pressure wound is common among paralysis patients. Then he fell into a coma following cardiac arrest. Christopher Reeve was 52 years old. And still to come on Newswatch, a treating leukemia without chemotherapy. We're going to take a look at a new injection option. That's on our medical breakthroughs report. But first, is the Tri-State's dry spell finally over? Meteorologist Chad which is next. Murray State University invites you to a dessert reception at Evansville Airport Marriott, Tuesday, October 12th, 7 to 9 p.m. It's free, no RSVP is required. You'll meet Murray State faculty, administrators, and students from various academic disciplines and learn about special tuition grants available for students in Posey, Vanderburg, and Warwick counties. U.S. News & World Report ranks Murray State as one of the top public institutions in the nation. Come see us Tuesday, October 12th, 7 to 9 p.m., Airport Marriott, Evansville. Making a house into a home requires skill, experience, and quality work. The professionals at Eagle Construction offer that to homeowners, along with the value of choice. Stop by their new home showroom today, located at 5900 Vogel Road in Evansville. See and touch every aspect that goes into making a house a home. Or stop by Bridalwood Subdivision, located off Boonville New Harmony Road, just west of McCutcheonville, to see the homes created by Eagle Construction, and let them begin designing the home of your dreams today. Around here, people know a good thing when they see it. Representative Bill Grunlow works tirelessly to protect our values. Thanks, Bill. Preserving the sanctity of marriage, protecting the unborn. Thanks, Bill. Passing laws to keep sex offenders, pornographers, and meth makers out of our community. Thanks, Bill. State Representative Bill Grunlow, our values in action. Thanks, Bill. Just doing my job. This portion of WeatherNet is brought to you by your Bryant dealer in Hobstadt. SR Many Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing, 812-768-6229. Now. Well, not only should these showers perk up the greenery out there, but they should get rid of that muck in the air. It's been kind of dirty because, of, the, uh, of course, we haven't had any rain to clean out. All those particles, all the uh, dust out there. Not a whole lot in the rain gauge. In fact, zero here at the station. We did see a trace of rainfall, but uh, didn't measure on the rain gauge. 62 degrees right now with the northeasterly breeze. Over in Henderson, they did see a little bit more rain. Six hundredths of an inch of rainfall. 60 degrees right now with an east northeasterly wind at about 10 miles per hour. And the weather net sites, again, six hundredths in Henderson. Just a trace here at the station. 10 Hundreds there in uh, Carmi and almost two tenths there, or not ten hundreds, ten one tenth I should say in Carmi and almost uh, two tenths there in uh, Wayne City, Illinois. But basically just a trace across the rest of the tri-state. Live Doppler right now is showing where the rain is, and uh, well, it's not here in Evansville, unfortunately. We did have some very very light rain showers, some sprinkles that moved through about a half hour ago here in Evansville proper, and it's moved off to the north. The heaviest rain, and it's still not that heavy, but uh, down to the south towards Paducah, and that's all headed generally up to the north, slightly off to the northeast, so we could get grazed by this batch of rainfall, but there is more behind it, so uh, hopefully we'll see uh, pretty good dousing by tomorrow afternoon, but don't expect an all-day rain out of this event. We're not going to see steady rains all day Tuesday or all day Wednesday, but just some occasional showers. Let's take a look at why. It's all because of a low-pressure system, and this low-pressure system is actually uh, what's left of Matthew, Tropical Storm Matthew, that moved through uh, the Gulf 
over the weekend, well, Matthew is spreading rain our way, and you can see we had that first band earlier this afternoon, then a couple lighter bands as well. And as I mentioned, there is more down to the southwest, just not a whole lot this evening. Light rain falling for Angie Titus about a half hour ago in Evansville and 62.1 degrees on her digital thermometer. 61 with light rain falling for uh, Rod Austin and Calhoun. He picked up a tenth of an inch so far. And uh, Joe Harris, no rain yet at all in Mount Carmel with overcast conditions. A quick cast is showing, well, that wave of rain tomorrow kind of circulating, uh, circulating in that uh, counterclockwise motion around that low pressure system. That uh, will eventually end by a Wednesday night. Then we'll see another very light rain event, it looks like, by Thursday morning. And that's in association with a cold front. That cold front, again, not going to be a big rain maker for us, but certainly a big cold spell uh, maker for us. We're going to see much cooler air behind it. 53 tonight with some scattered showers and easterly breeze and then tomorrow 65 with occasional showers. The best chance will be tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours and we could pick up anywhere from about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch here in Evansville over the next few days. The heavier amounts will be down to the southwest as you go towards Shawnee Town. And tomorrow night, well, more showers and 50 degrees. And then Wednesday, some scattered showers out and about as well. 64, so it'll still be cool. Your extended forecast, 59 on Thursday, 60 on Friday. We'll have another cold front move on through on Saturday with some cooler temperatures once again behind it. But really, in the extended forecast, the best chance for rainfall, the best chance to get that uh, <laughs> rain bonnet out will be tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours. But right now, it's still diet rain, right? Diet rain, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay, yeah. we'll take it, though. Yeah, anything <laughs> we can get, that's right. And next in our Medical Breakthroughs Report. I would guess that without treatment, everybody would be dead within a few months. Treating leukemia without chemotherapy. We'll be right back. There's a crisis here at home. Doctors are leaving and our families are in danger. Gordon Mag understands the problem firsthand. Mag works side by side with doctors to provide free medical care to thousands of sick children every year. Mag has helped doctors fight frivolous lawsuits that are driving up the cost of health care and forcing doctors to leave our state. I believe doctors should spend their time caring for children. I'm Gordon Mag, and I'm running for the Illinois Supreme Court. Feel the new day into your life. Escape the morning blahs with the Tri-State's number one morning show, Newswatch 14 Sunrise. With a healthy blend of news, weather, traffic, and a major dose of fun. And good morning to you. Reach up for the sunrise. Feel the new day into your life. Sometimes you just feel like having some eggs, sausage, biscuits, and gravy. Hmm. Too bad you don't have any eggs, sausage, biscuits, or gravy. The Loaded Biscuit and Gravy Breakfast Bowl with eggs and sausage at Hardee's. For right prices right now, come to Kroger. Aisle after aisle, we've put yellow right price tags on even more of your favorite items. So now, saving money on the products that you want and need is easier than ever before. Just be sure to look for the little yellow signs. Low prices just keep getting lower at Kroger. Kroger. Right store, right price. Gigantic cable company. A DVR. Hold on. D digital video recorders? We don't have those. You uh, tell them they're on back order. I'll come help you. Hi, it's me. I'm back. Hello. Listen, you don't want to pause live TV because that's going to give you a false sense of uh, power. Switch to Dish Network Satellite TV and get a Dish Player DVR, the most popular digital video recorder in America, and 60 all digital channels, including your local channels, for about a dollar a day. Call 1 800 333 Dish or visit Radio Shack, Sears, or your local participating retailer. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. 
This is University of Evansville Purple Aces Basketball. Season tickets are on sale now. Incredible seats are still available. Call 479-ACES and don't miss a single game, including the Veteran Community Classic November 6th, when your Purple Aces and USI face off for the first time ever. Call 479-ACES. Purple Aces Basketball. Feel it. Wish you had friends in Hollywood? Now you do. Access Hollywood. No one does Hollywood like Nancy and Billy. Weekdays at 2. A treatment for a rare form of leukemia could help patients survive without ever needing chemotherapy. This treatment is lipoatra, and it's been used on patients with APL, acute pyomyelitic leukemia. Here's tonight's Health Team Medical Breakthroughs Report. David Wildrick, the diagnosis of leukemia sounded like a death sentence. I wasn't happy about what they told me they were going to do to me. They told me they were going to take, give me chemotherapy. I'd have to be there six weeks. They're going to take my immune system down to zero and then bring it back up. Then he got a second opinion at MD Anderson Cancer Center where he works. I would guess that without treatment, everybody would be dead within a few months. With the new treatment, researchers take Atro, which is a form of vitamin A, wrap it in fat, and inject it. It could eliminate the need for chemo. David welcomed it. They administer it through an IV line in your arm. Um, it took a couple of hours, uh, and then uh, really the only uh, side effect from it was a headache. He later had an allergic reaction to the drug. It won't work for everyone, but Lipoatra did keep 10 of the 34 patients in remission for several years without the toxic effect of chemo. I think probably the first demonstration in the field of leukemia that you can cure patients without giving them chemotherapy. Dr. Esty says there are still some side effects, and it may not offer many advantages over chemo at this time, but he says it represents what the future of leukemia treatment could look like. The fact that we did the liposomal actor study, so that was this thing that said, gee, it's plausible to do this, to defer chemotherapy and still wind up okay. And he says that's a step in the right direction. Now, this isn't approved by the FDA yet, and in the meantime, Dr. Esty is currently working on a follow-up study to treat APL without chemo using Atra and arsenic trioxide. If you'd like more information, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Breakthroughs, The Future of Leukemia Treatment, care of 14 WFIE, Evansville, or log on to 14WFIE.com. Later on Newswatch, a parade of pump pumpkins. We're going to check out these giant gourds. And soccer sectional action heats up in the tri-state. Sports is next. Dakota. Nice, yeah. With the only V8 in its class. This is gonna look great in our bedroom. You are such an... And the most overall interior room. Wonderful man. Are the most popular rooms in your home showing, well, just how popular they are? Let Kite Home Center help with great savings during National Kitchen and Bath Month. Right now, save on shower right tub and shower doors. Choose from dozens of frame finishes and glass styles. See our flyer for more great kitchen and bath savings. Need to give the outside of your home a boost? Choose Regal Garage Doors starting at just $187.99. Remember, contractors depend on Kite Home Center, and so should you. From start to finish, you can find it at Kite. Finding the right health plan can seem like you're in a real maze. So when it's time to decide, being able to choose can make all the difference. That's why with Sagamore Health Network, you get lots of choices. From more doctors to choose from, to more hospitals to choose for care. So next time, choose a health plan that's not a maze, just amazing. Sagamore Health Network, simply the better choice. Mm. Mm. Oh, 
the Flamethrower Burger at Dairy Queen with crispy jalapeno bacon and Tabasco flavored mayo. Do one carefully and DQ something different. And finish off with a DQ Blizzard of the Month. Get up to the minute scores with Sports Ticker, brought to you by Kenny Kent Toyota and Lexus. much slipping and sliding tonight because we really didn't get that much rain this evening. No, it kind of looked like it early on, but mm -hmm. uh, not to be, yeah. Pretty nice night out there for the opening night of the soccer sectionals. You didn't have to go far either to find a sectional tournament game tonight. Bunch of teams were involved on opening night. We'll start with the boys matchup. Central on the move against Wood Memorial. Joe Tolan for the Bears with a shot, but it stopped in goal. More pressure from Central a little later, but watch Wood Memorial's Andrew Stoltz here. He was a one-man defensive machine chasing the ball all over the field. That's some nice hustle when you're down six to nothing. Scott Kane does find a shot for Central, but it'll hit the post. They had too much tonight, though. They win it by a final of six to nothing. On the girls' side, the umbrellas were out just in case as Gibson Southern met Wood Memorial. Second half tightens up one nothing. Looking for more. Casey Hibden with the shot. Looks like this one is stopped, but watch the ball just trickle away and over the line just barely. It's a goal, and Gibson Southern goes on to win it two to nothing easing the nervousness of Coach Larry Beal. I've been nervous all day. I woke up nervous. I've been just wound like a top the entire day. Uh, like you say, you know, first game, regardless of who it's against, um, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, uptight about it, so uh, we survived. Gibson Southern is now 10-4-2 on the season. And they'll face Central next. Lady Bears beat Mount Vernon 9-0 in the late game out there tonight. Elsewhere, the Castle Girls stopped day school 8-0, and Harrison beat North 1-0 in boys' play. Princeton beat Gibson Southern 4-2 in volleyball tonight in Boonville. Knocked off Princeton. The Aces men's basketball team wrapped up their preseason trip to Canada tonight. They'd won the first three games over the weekend, and they did it again tonight. 102-56 is your final score. Marcus Butler at 14 and Matt Webster 12 for Evansville. The Cardinals wrapped up a spot in the National League Championship Series by beating the Dodgers last night 6-2. Barring the greatest comeback of all time, they'll likely face the Houston Astros, who are beating Atlanta 12-3 right now in the fifth deciding game of that series. Cardinals got the big hit last night from Albert Pujols. His three-run homer was the difference as the Cardinals won the series three games to one. In the clubhouse afterward, another big champagne celebration. You might wonder why they're going crazy since they still have two rounds to go, but they say it doesn't mean they're satisfied, just appreciating the opportunities. A lot of guys with great careers but have never been able to, to do this once, let alone twice already in a season. And uh, something that you don't take for granted uh, because it's, a, it's too hard to get to where we are right now not to. But in, in the same breath, you also realize that uh, you know, th th we've crossed a couple hurdles, but we're not to that finish line yet, and there's a long way to go. Game one of the NLCS is in St. Louis on Wednesday nights. A motorsports fan's dream out on the east side tonight. Some nice cars on display at Buxton Motorsports. But tonight, a special guest with some special red performance cars. Roland Linder brought a couple of cars, including his 780 horsepower 1990 Ferrari F40 LM that was built for Ferrari to compete at the 24 Hours of Le Mans endurance race. Goes from zero to 60 in just over three seconds and can run 225 miles an hour. Linder was a well-known driver from Belgium. He now serves as an instructor teaching others how to drive those Ferraris and Porsches. I really enjoy showing the car. People enjoy seeing this car. It's pretty rare. There's only four like this in America. So it's a great opportunity to have new friends, meet old people, uh, people who saw me or heard about me on the Ferrari chat. So it's a great opportunity to do such events. 
Linder and his partner Mike Cronenberg are currently undefeated in the Sports Car Club of America competition with their Porsche 911 G2. I'd like to take that Ferrari around the block you a just, couple times. Yeah, just once. Just once oh. take it around the block, quietly put it in the garage, and don't scratch it. Right, that's <laughs> sure. There's some paranoia involved yeah. there. Okay, thanks, Rich. Thanks a lot. And next on Newswatch, the pride of the pumpkin patch. We're going to check out the top gourds, so stay with us. Come in here. Yeah. Gun metal. York's new Affinity heat pump and furnace systems are sleek, quiet, and efficient. Is it black? And they come in colors as distinctive as you are. Stone. Because people like color. Champagne. The new Affinity series from York. Get up to $1,500 cash back or special financing or extended warranties on select products. Call today in Owensboro, Montgomery and Webb Plumbing and Heating. In Du Bois and surrounding counties, Huntingburg Machine Works. In Tell City, Somer Heating and Cooling. Character. It's how you live your life. Jim and Mary Bunning raise nine children. Enjoy 35 grandchildren. These are the values and experiences Jim Bunning delivers for Kentucky. Expanded health care benefits for Kentucky veterans and National Guard families. Standing up to bad trade deals with China and Mexico to protect Kentucky jobs. Standing with our troops to defeat terror and protect America. Jim Bunning. Strong leadership in challenging times. I'm Jim Bunning and I approve this message. When you're one of nine children, you learn not to waste a thing. It should be the same for state government. It's why Lieutenant Governor Kathy Davis and I are overhauling state government from top to bottom. The Kernan-Davis plan? Eliminate one-third of all state agencies. Demand more accountability from state government. Make property tax assessments simpler and fairer. It's the first overhaul of Indiana's government in 30 years. And even Republicans are praising the Kernan-Davis plan. Who's your values? John Jennings says they're his, but John Jennings just registered to vote in Indiana last year. In fact, he lived in Boston, Massachusetts for over 10 years. To the Boston Globe, he calls Boston home. And his campaign has taken more money from out of state than families here in Indiana. The first who's your value is honesty. Apparently, it's not one John Jennings learned in Boston. The National Republican Congressional Committee paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Before Attorney General Steve Carter started the Do Not Call list, my family couldn't eat dinner without that constant ringing. Now, what a difference. Steve Carter said if we'd vote for him, he'd work hard to stop those irritating sales calls. And so we did. My work with the Do Not Call list makes a difference for you and millions of others. But I'm not stopping there. With your support, I'll push for a system that lets you know when a sex offender or criminal moves near you. Vote for Steve Carter. Pumpkin growers showing off those giant gourds. That's right. People from California, Oregon, Washington State started lining up early for the 31st annual Safeway World Championship Pumpkin Way Off. The winning gourd rocked the scales at 1,229 pounds, beating last year's pumpkin by 49 pounds. The winner took home more than six $1,000. They got more rain than us that? to grow Something. those pumpkins, yeah. Miracle grow. That's right. Well, kind it's a, a miracle out there that we have, to have some rain showers. On Live Doppler, we do have a few light rain showers falling towards, oh, West Salem and Mount Carmel, and then down towards the south, some moderate pockets towards Harrisburg. As you wake up tomorrow morning, well, expect temperatures in the middle 50s with a few light showers out there, and uh, then a better steady rain by the afternoon. All right, enjoy it, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Terry Korb worked in Evansville his entire life.